All right, balancing nuclear reactions. Balancing nuclear reactions is actually fairly easy. So and we're going to do a couple examples here. So these are right on your hand out there. So U-23892 turning into thorium-90-234. plus a big question mark. And the question here is just what is the product? So what is this other particle that we see in the products? So, and the idea here is that the mass numbers on both sides of the reaction arrow have to be balanced. And if we balance the mass numbers, then what will be the mass of this lovely particle? Four, Four. awesome. So next stage of the game is the Atomic numbers, or the charges, if you will, also have to be balanced. So what does the charge on this mystery particle have to be? Two. So, and anybody recall what has a charge of plus two, but mass of four, what is it? Yeah, that's your alpha particle. So the mystery particle here turned out to be an alpha particle. What's another way to write an alpha particle? Good, same thing as a helium what? This is really important, it's a helium nucleus. It is not the same as a helium atom. So how can it be the same thing as a helium nucleus but not the same thing as a helium atom? No electrons, so no electrons, that's important. So again, an alpha particle, same thing as a helium nucleus but not the same thing as a helium atom. There's no electrons there whatsoever. So, cool, we've got some new particles to talk about then. So we just learned about the alpha particle. So, and that's the same thing again as your helium nucleus. So you also got your neutron. So a neutron, we give the symbol lowercase n. So what is the charge on a neutron? Zero, good, that's why it's called the neutron, neutral. So, and the mass number? One, cool. So what about a proton? That's another particle we'll talk about in this context. What's its charge? Plus one, and its mass number? Also one approximately one AMU there as well. So we'll also talk about an electron. So what is the charge in an electron? Good, negative one. What's the mass number of an electron? Zero. This is the same thing as a beta particle. So whether I write it as E for electron or beta, same diff, it means the same thing in this context. So does an electron really have a zero mass? No. It turns out it weighs 1 1,800th, approximately, of an AMU. Well, if we rounded the whole numbers, that rounds down to zero. Although technically it's not exactly zero, but the mass number rounds to zero. So just to keep that in mind. So we also come up with something new here. Looks like this. What is this thing? Yeah, it's your positively charged electron. We call it a positron. And it also... could be symbolized with a beta as well, but with a plus charge instead of a minus charge. Cool, then you got your gamma. And this is not a particle though, this is a gamma ray. What is it? Yeah, this thing really does have zero mass and zero charge. It's just light. It's really high energy electromagnetic radiation. Correct. If you balance anything with this, you have the same thing on both sides. This doesn't affect anything. So this usually, as we'll find out in a little bit, accompanies other nuclear decay processes. And it's kind of just a way for a nucleus to go from an excited state down to a lower state, kind of like electrons used to do. When, when an electron goes from an excited state to the ground state, that electron must what? What happens? A photon what? Is emitted. Same thing here. When a nucleus goes from some sort of excited state down to a lower energy state, it also emits a photon, just a really super high energy photon. All right, if you look at this, the particles get, or at least in this case rays, get lighter and lighter as you go down. And it turns out the lighter they are, let's write this sideways. Turns out they get more penetrating power. When we say penetrating power, I mean like the ability to pass through your skin, let's say. So if you were gonna get exposed to nuclear radiation, 
what would you probably choose? I'd choose alpha particles myself. So less likely to make it through your skin. So however, gamma rays, not so much. Not the greatest thing in the world, more likely to get through your skin. So kind of the way it works. Questions on that? OK. So going back to balancing, just wanted to bring up all the particles, because we're talking about so your alpha particle. If we look here, this is called alpha emission, where alpha particle is a product. We'll get more into that in a little bit here. So if you look, nuclear reactions, all of them, give off tons of energy. That's why we use them in nuclear reactors and nuclear bombs, because they all give off tons of energy. Where do they get that energy from? Where do they get that energy from? Well, where does the energy in a chemical reaction come from? When it's endothermic or exothermic, where's that energy either being absorbed or, or you know, evolved, coming from the bonds? Well, we're not making and breaking bonds anymore, so we're not dealing with the energy in electrons. We're dealing with a huge energy source, much bigger than what you're going to see for electrons. We're converting mass into energy. And it turns out when you convert mass into energy, So look familiar, Einstein's famous equation. So this is the conversion between mass and energy. If you're able to convert mass completely into energy, this is the equation you use. So mass is in kilograms, and you multiply by c squared. What is c? What is that? Speed of light, and that's just kind of fast, right? It's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Speed of light's fast enough to go around the Earth 7 times in 1 second. It's pretty darn fast. So when, by the time you take a small mass and multiply it by the speed of light, a huge number and squared, a little mass turns into a ton of energy. So if you take, you know, your average tank of gas. So your average tank of gas, like let's say a 10 gallon tank, you know, on my Corolla, I could probably drive for like 350 miles on that, right? So however, I'm not doing this, right? I'm not converting the mass into energy. I'm actually, you know, combusting it, which is a chemical reaction, not a nuclear reaction. Let's say I had the equivalent amount of fuel that was nuclear fuel. So that would fit in, you know, in the gas tank in my car. If that were nuclear fuel, that would power my car forever and ever and ever, and you would never, ever, 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 ever have to ever worrying about running out. In fact, that would probably be enough to power the entire United States for a good period of time. So a lot more energy in the nucleus when we convert mass into energy. So if we look, if every nuclear reaction, every single one of them, converts mass into energy, then what should I look for in a nuclear reaction? There should always be the loss of what? Mass. And the products always weigh less than the reactants. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. We just balanced this, though, right? Didn't, what did we say about the mass numbers? They had to balance. So did we actually lose mass? So, but where, where did I lose the mass? Well, if you notice, these are rounded to the nearest whole number, right? And the mass numbers are always going to balance, but they're rounded to the nearest whole number. The exact masses, we can carry those out to like seven or eight decimal places. If you were to actually have the exact mass of an alpha particle, the exact mass of this thorium-234 nucleus, and the exact mass of this uranium-238 nucleus, you'd find out that the products do really weigh a teeny, 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 tiny bit less than the reactant did. So you don't notice it in the mass numbers themselves, but if you have the exact masses, that's where you'll see it. All right, let's balance one more of these. Right off your handout again. OK. So in this case, the mystery particle is now a reactant on your handout. So what must be the mass number on this mystery particle? Zero. I got 214 on the reactant side. I got 214 on the product side. This has got to be zero to keep it balanced on both sides of the arrow. What does the atomic number, the charge, have to be to make the atomic numbers or the charges balance out? It's got to be negative one. What has a zero mass number and a charge of negative one? Yeah, your beta particle or your electron. You can write it either way. So either beta or E. Take your pick. So it turns out this, when an electron is a reactant, 
we call this electron capture. We'll see this in a little bit as well.